Welcome to Brighton, an affluent, vibrant and eclectic city 47 miles directly south of London. But all is not well in Brighton. Despite having a relatively low population of 275,000 or so people, it's got the third highest per capita homeless rate in the UK, only higher in London and Manchester. So why? Does Brighton have such a large homeless population? I'm going to meet with a few of the people that are living on the streets in these very cold conditions at the moment. We're just at the start of December. And then I'm going to meet with a gentleman who runs a very important charity that's been working for 27 years to help people who are homeless in this city. So yeah, Brighton is a very beautiful place, but it has always been a magnet for the homeless. And we're here to talk to them, see what life is like, and find out why Brighton suffers in this way and what is being done with an ever-growing problem to help. So what's your name, mate? My name's Kerry. Nice to meet you, mate, yeah. Right. So what's the situation like in Brighton? It's pretty bad, mate, it's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of homeless, so. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the numbers and third highest numbers of homeless people in the country yeah. after London and Manchester with much larger populations. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think there's a big drug problem. A big drug problem. Yeah. And I think it causes a lot of problems for people who sort of left their, their original city, they've moved here to get away from whatever and then because they're maybe slightly vulnerable or whatever at the time, they've come here and then they start using and, and that can cause a lot of other problems which usually causes homelessness as well. So you think people come from London, obviously, being 50 miles up the road? A lot of people from London, yeah. Other places too? Other places, all around the country, all around the country, because it's kind of like end of the line, kind of come to the sea, you think you can get a bit of tranquility, but... Can you? Know, you? You can, I think you can if you really... But you have to work hard. I think you have to work hard to stay on the right side. Yeah. To keep away from yeah. the negative influences. Yeah, definitely. So are you from Brighton originally? No, I'm from, originally from... Well, originally I was born in Thames Wells, but most of my life I spent in London. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And how long have you been in Brighton then? Um, probably... Uh, I've been what? about... Um, I've probably been in Brighton three years in total. So there's one statistic that's really jumped out at me about homeless people. A lot of the time, people see homeless people with addiction and alcohol problems, and they think that that's the root cause of homelessness. But you have to understand that this is a multifaceted problem, and that 47% of homeless people suffer from mental illness. Now that's compared to 25% of the general populace, those that aren't homeless. Depression coming from mental illness is a huge part of this problem. But also, depression in wider society can lead to people falling into the traps of homelessness. I do recommend that you listen to the paid partnership that is supporting this video today, because I genuinely think that it can help you if you're suffering with any of those problems. This is a paid partnership with BetterHelp. Is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Regardless of if you're struggling with a clinical mental health condition like depression or anxiety, or if you're just sometimes struggling to deal with the day-to-day -day realities of life, therapy can give you the tools you need to approach life in a very different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about BetterHelp. I'm not ashamed to admit that I have had mental health struggles at times in my life. And these struggles have inspired me to showcase the stories of real people and their lives. It also helps me to talk to others about any struggles I may have. You don't have to struggle alone. Maybe talking to a therapist at BetterHelp can help you. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy accessible. And that's really important because finding a therapist can be hard. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easy because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a credentialed therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched to a therapist. There's a link in my description. 
betterhelp.com forward slash Wendell. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Finding a therapist is like meeting people in life in general. You need to find somebody that clicks with you. For that reason, if you don't really fit with a therapist, which is a common thing in therapy, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional cost. I can't help but think how helpful BetterHelp would have been when I was a younger man and I was struggling at times, at a time when online therapy wasn't available. Perhaps BetterHelp can help you now. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the description below or visit betterhelp.com forward slash Wendell. Thank you again to BetterHelp for supporting this channel. Have you got any support or any like anything coming I'll up? Get, you know what? I have. I've actually now getting a lot more support and I've literally just started taking the ball by the horns and doing a lot more for myself. Okay, mate, yeah. Yeah, because usually you, I wouldn't be able to talk to you on camera because I was so ill. Yeah. But because I'm now on a prescription, it's actually helping me to yeah. get myself a little bit more stable. Like, there would be no chance that I'd be able to talk to you like this. If you have a habit for certain drugs, it's, you wake up every morning and you're, you're ill. And you're, you of course. Use this, and you're more, you need it more than food. So you're you're in like some supportive um, like assistance at the moment to try and help I, you with those problems. Um, yeah, I'm problems. trying to get a place. I want to get a place. I want to get off the street because it's not it's not good to me. I mean, I'm, I'm an intelligent 34 year old man. I can tell, mate. Be, you should not be out here. You shouldn't, mate. I'm, no. I'm wasting so much by being here, sat here doing this like, every day. It's not it's not right. It's not right. I, I, I'm not I'm not. I'm not Paying the due to my family and myself. Probably be a lot of people who know me online. It's a little, uh, like I, I, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people who will be sad to see me in this situation. Uh, if your if your if your channel is popular and a lot of people watch it, then yeah, I'm trying to sort it. And I'm trying to do better things. Are you happy for me to use this? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. I really do. I need to get a phone. This is, Stupid not having a phone out here. Yeah, I've like, got a phone. I have got a phone. Yeah. I've got no phone. I've got no phone. I went to meet my CGL worker at 9.30 this morning. Because I slept too long, she's going to be worried. I meant to pick up the script. I mean, trying to get the routine of picking up the script every morning at 9.30. So how much do you think you need for a phone? 20 quid. Yeah. Yeah. I'll sort you out with that, mate. I'll get you 20 quid for a phone. One of the reasons I do this is because I just like to meet human beings yeah. and their stories, and yeah, I yeah. really appreciate your honesty. No, 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 I really no, no, do. Mate. I admire what you do. I admire what you do. Really, it, it's, it's helped me today. Actually, it's helped. Yeah. Sometimes a conversation just can put people to put the foot forward to follow with the next one. Yeah. Yeah. People don't. They don't give enough time to people walk past and they judge or they ignore, and they don't give. We're all human on the planet. We're all human. We're all human on the planet trying to help each other. But we are. People don't understand that. People are wrapped up in their own stuff and like everyone's got a day-to-day -day life. Of course, yeah. Their routine. And I understand why people are scared of us. People are scared of us. They're like, because there's some of us, a lot of us ain't nice. A lot of us are so angry with society that we just can't treat society back nicely. Uh, nice as well. Okay. Yeah. I just think if we can connect with other human beings, especially when they are living a slightly different life to us, then we can we can grow as people. Yeah. I really believe that. I think that too. I think there's so much strength and connection. Connection is so important. I appreciate it mate. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I wish you all the best mate. Yeah, thank you, mate. Okay. Thank you. Brighton certainly is an affluent city, but just steps away from the lanes, which are full of boutique, shopping, offerings, and jewelry stores. There's a gentleman that's kindly agreed to meet me, Solomon. It's really cold at the moment. Oh, it's and it's really, it is very cold. Yeah. And it's really uh, difficult for people sleeping rough. So let's see how Solomon is coping. My name's Solomon. Solomon. Wonderful name, biblical name. Yeah, yeah, of course. A lot of the British names are 
Yeah. Like biblical, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. You're, you're sleeping rough on the streets at the moment? I am at the moment, yeah. How yeah. long have Last you been? Last night was really cold, to be fair. It's freezing. Like, um, I've been on and off sleeping rough for about uh, 20 years now. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, dare I ask, like, how, how has it been so long? Um, mainly because I was squatting and festival work and then uh, I had a really bad car crash. Well, to be fair, first off, I fell out of a tree. You fell <laughs> like, out of a tree? Yeah, 25 feet onto my back. <laughs> like, my friend thought I was dead, <laughs> literally. So what's life like on the streets in Brighton, 2023? Um, it's a lot worse than it used to be, mate. In what like, way? Well, I got here about 17, 18 years ago and it it used to be really shanty and everyone was like talking positive and like how they could change their lives and we could change the world and like you know just like one love and now it's just like really sort of just it seems a bit uh callous and harsh and like there's a lot of london lads who've come down and they're all trying to make money and there's a lot of crack and smack issues and that's it like I, I'll sit on the street and I've gotten over my issues well I'm getting over my issues obviously you're never gonna fully like get past uh, an addiction like that <laughs> um, yeah I'm getting over my addiction issues and like I, I get asked four five maybe six times a day if I can find a bit of white, and it's like, I don't want that in my life anymore. There's all these lads who are just shouting their mouth off, and it, yeah, it got callous and harsh. Brighton, statistically, apparently, has the third highest number of homeless people in the country after mm. London and Manchester, but obviously a much smaller population, about 275,000. Mm. A lot of people are migrating here. Brighton's become yeah. a magnet for homelessness, and you think that people coming from London and other places, that's made it a bit more dangerous? Yes, most definitely, yeah. yeah Why do you definitely. think people come here? Um, I guess it's just uh, the the sort of lure of the seaside and like it, it it's like um it, it seems like the rest of the country treats it like the costa del sol to get me like um i i traveled along the coast from hastings uh accidentally bumped into someone here yeah and ended up sort of sticking about it's a beautiful city and i love it um but it's just got a really dark underbelly. Okay. And it will swallow you up. Really? Brighton. You've yeah. seen it swallow a lot of people up. I've seen it kill a good few people. Like, I've, I've had a number of my friends who have passed because of various issues in Brighton. Yeah. Yeah, and some really gorgeous people I've lost. Yeah. I mean, if I can be candidly honest... You, don't, you can be as candid as you want to or don't want to be. I took ketamine for 17 years. I smoked weed for about 20 years. Um, I've injected speed, methadrone, cocaine, heroin. I've probably within the last two months come off of most of the things. I mean, like, the ketamine and the weed was about three years ago. Um, the crack cocaine and heroin was probably about two and a half months ago. I'm just starting to titrate down off my alcohol from two litres of vodka to about six cans of Desperados a day. Yeah. So actually... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So actually I'm doing really well and I'm really proud of myself. The most important thing that I feel about Brighton is like there is a lot of good people around. There are, sorry, there are a lot of good people around. And there is a lot of love. And it's still quite beautiful, but it just got a bit weird and dicey, as I said, yeah. 
yeah. yeah. It's got a little bit more of an edge than it used to have. Very much edgier, yeah. yeah. A lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very much edgier. Yeah. I appreciate it, mate. Thank you so yeah. much for talking to me, yeah. Yeah. Solomon. Pick yeah, up. thank you so much for your honesty as well. No thank worries. you. Yeah, well, as candid as it can be. So hello, this is, hello, hello, <laughs> mate. So this is Paul. This is Paul from Off the Fence, yeah. who are a wonderful charity that Thank help you. the homeless here Appreciate in Brighton and Hove. And he's agreed to come for a little walk and talk with me today and tell me all about what got him into starting up the charity yeah. and a little bit about what the charity does and yeah. the journey that you got to get here and yeah. what your mission objectives are for today, that tomorrow and good. the future. This is our base. Yeah. This is our one of our day centres. So, so this is the day centre. We probably have about 40 to 50 in right about lunchtime and they'll come in, they'll have coffee or they'll, they'll have a friendship, food, shower units, the laundrette in here. We have hairdressers come, foot care people. Uh, they're able to get every bit of clothing you can imagine uh, and just keep them alive long enough so that we can get them to the next stage and, and on and doing the business. This is like number four storeroom and we get this time of year all the kids to donate you know, uh, hats, smalls for all, one yeah. school Scarves, would do. body warmers, hats, shoes. The old shebang, yeah. underarm, smelling good Brighton. And each school will do one focus on one thing. And so we, we get a load of equipment. Uh, the army boots, we get the military to, to, to provide. The army kit, the army kind of bags. Yeah. Uh, we've got the top of rain sleeping bag just to keep people alive. I'd like to introduce you to the new chief exec of Off The Fence. Okay, just uh, here. Uh, just here. He's, he's been ambushed. How are you, mate? How the are new you? CEO, yeah. Yeah, good yeah. to see you. Good to see you, mate. Say, say hello. To hello. <laughs> What's your name, mate? My name is Julio Abraham. Julio, yeah. I'm yeah. taking over from Paul. Yeah. I just have a delivery for our women, and I gotta go, but we love your support. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We're going to try and get people to see what you do. Awesome. And Thank raise so some donations for you too. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very much a Brighton lad. This is my city. That's why I've got a passion for this city. I took a lot out of the city. Uh, you know, my old man, dad, he, he was a bit of a drinker. And, and then the person that really uh, bought us up, my granddad, he, he threw himself under the fast train so my teenage years was a bit rough and yeah, ready yeah and i've got adhd up to the eyeballs and uh so things weren't good as i said we've been the mayor's charity five years on the trot yep we we've been brighton and Hove albion's charity of the year but we've got a problem now there's still a major issue on our streets there's still people that slept out rough for minus five last night yeah it's absolutely it was, freezing yeah it was hard enough getting the car ready to go out this morning at six to let alone sleeping in it yeah and what we kind of uh want to make sure that we don't keep on watching you know watching and hearing about people dying on the street yes friends I, of yours that you've made over, you over know, the years I, 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 it's, you must you have see, lost a lot we lost a lot the wonderful thing though as we walk into to like more Brighton and Hove is that so many different places have got ex-homeless people that are now working yeah I, I, and it doesn't take much to make a great deal of difference yeah to a life, I, I mean, if people haven't changed their socks in three months, it's quite something to to peel off a pair of socks, and uh, that that's that's a quid, or, or a toothbrush and a toothpaste. If you haven't had something like that, it's amazing what something as simple as that. The number one thing stolen from boots this time of year is sanitary products so yeah. we make sure that we're stocked up when our teams go up at, out at night with sanitary products and the, the whole shebang so we can make sure that nobody 
is left desperate. So you scour the city on the evenings? Yes, we, we've looking got for teams people. going out. Yeah. We have the street sheet that people are able to get, that is able to give them everything from where they can go, where they can get help. We're able to get people into Schwepp, the council run. If it goes under minus zero, they run that. Yeah, so explain, you've mentioned Schwepp to me before we put the camera yeah. on, so can you explain that? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, you know, cold weather service. Yeah, like an emergency, emergency crisis. Emergency crisis. If it below goes zero, yeah. Below zero, we can get them in and get them sorted there, Ollie. And I, I, I mean, we're able as well to get people into accident and emergency quick. Where I'm taking you now, Ollie, yeah. is where so many of the homeless We'll sleep at night. Here in this, Hove, this, yeah. This is the cemetery. This is the cemetery. Yeah. And they'll come here because it's private. Yeah. You know, that uh, if they go into town, the rough sleepers don't like sleeping in town because it's so noisy. Yeah. And uh, they're at risk all the time from the nightclubs. Yeah. Let's go and sleep. Drunken revellers. And, so, yeah. so, like, a lot of people will sleep in somewhere like this uh they're like people say to me well we don't see a lot of rough sleepers well they don't like being in the city center so they'll sleep on the beach yeah or they're sleeping areas where it, where it's dark and uh you know after a number of years we know where to find them but the whole kind of idea i hate to keep homeless people in charity yeah. our whole aim is to get them back on their feet we work with places like royal mail right the way through to to building construction sites people that trust us as a charity to take homeless people on for work we do a sleep out once a year where we get an awful lot of the you know, the great and the good come and uh, and help us out and it's cold it's in november yep. but in the morning the one thing that i can't wait for is to go home for a shower, Hot shower and, and, and a nice bed. Yeah. can you imagine sleeping out week in week out you know not knowing where not knowing if you're going to to be able to uh to, to to live to, to to survive i mean we have got some great agencies in the city and uh there's there's a lot that is being done but there's so many families now on the street uh when i started it was about drink and drugs today it's about people that have lost their homes lost their jobs and we're all just only three pay packets from being homeless. But hello, mate. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> How you? So what? How are you, sir? Someone's walking out. I thought there's no fucking way. <laughs> That's Paul Young. Yes, it is. Good to see you. How you doing? Oh, we we've got a great so what, team. You'll you. be very well. I am very fucking happy to meet you. Man. Oh, it's great to see you, mate. Fucking free shallows. Oh, really? Whoa. Yeah. yeah, fucking really. <laughs> come along, mate. Don't you? You can't. You Don't come. Move. I mean, right, well, I'll do it. I'm going, I'm going to get rid of my stuff. I'm going to get rid of my stuff and I walk down. Oh, that'd be great. Good I promise. As... Paul, Paul, I promise. It's great to see you. Always good to you see too. you, mate. Nice to meet you. Time. What's your name, mate? My name's Brian. Brian. But on the street, when people call me Sticks. Sticks. So I've got no teeth. Yes. Yeah. I used to have a long time ago. For uh, uh, many of them, that, that they'll live with issues uh, right the way through. I mean, they're never, you know, a lot of them, you know, we're able to rehouse get themselves somewhere properly to live and and go on to do great jobs i mean a lot of them support us now yeah uh after you know 27 years there are some that are never gonna break from the habit yeah never you know the the drink and the drugs have got them for for a good for a good time uh, let me just give this anti-freeze is open uh, just round the corner in another half an hour come come round they've got all the gear that you might need I don't know if you've been there yet but uh, uh, did they give you much were they able to help project anti-freeze on Portland Road 
They'll keep your sleeping bags, boots, you name it, they've got it. Love to see you. That young lady that we saw there, she's probably will get an amount of money and she's part of a group that are professional beggars. So you see that a lot, yeah. Yeah, we see that a lot and it's growing, it's growing. It's really it. hard for me to differentiate, I'll you be know, honest with uh, you, bet between, between the two. I also have on me like food vouchers, I have McDonald's vouchers, but you offer them that and, and they don't want that. They just want the just cash. Just money. Professional begging is a problem because it makes homelessness look really, really bad, yeah. you know. They're, they're, the people get fed up with that. So one of the things that I'm investigating when I'm making this video, Paul, yeah. is that Brighton has per capita, according to a statistic that I read from Shelter, yeah. the third highest yes. number of homeless people per capita yes. after London and Manchester. That's the statistic I read. Yeah. Why those high numbers for Brighton? Well, well, there's a number of reasons for that. I, I mean, uh, first off, if you're homeless and you're living in Scotland, well, you can have the choice of being under snow now or being a lot warmer, even though it is minus five, on the coast of Brighton. Uh, a lot of people come from the city, from London, and they'll come down. We've got a lot of good agencies. Uh, we've got a lot of good services as well that, that are more kind of integrated where more help can be given. Uh, a lot of people lost their jobs in Croydon and Crawley because uh, of Covid and the the, the aeroplanes, uh, Gatwick yeah. took off so many jobs. Yeah, grounded aeroplanes uh, for a year or so, and, yeah, I forget about that, yeah. People lost jobs and and they, they, they've had to be thrown out and moved out. There's a lot of Brighton people struggling as well to just keep up with these high rents. There are a lot of great volunteer forces out there that can make a difference. If I can make it, Paul Young, dyslexic, up to me eyeballs, didn't do very well at school. For 27 years, we must have seen tens of thousands of people turned around. And if you want to make a difference, we'll make a start. You know, there's a lot of people talk about it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And uh, the smallest of things, 50p for a toothbrush, uh, a pound for a, a pair of gloves. What a difference that makes. The hats, we've got the military that gives us the boots and the, the good gear that keeps them alive. But the big thing is to make sure that we can and we must make a difference to people that have fallen through the net. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, like 100% when we finish making this video, I'm going to make a donation to the charity. Thank you. But no, I also I... am appealing to other people that this, yes. is, this is one of the most genuine charities that I've come across making these videos. Great. So we'll Thank put you. on screen now and a link in the description below all yes. the different ways that you can donate to help. If you live in the Brighton area, yeah. then maybe you can come and volunteer and get involved. Oh, if you absolutely. don't, then I know that you might be thinking that you want to help an organisation in your area. Um, I understand that. Paul's a very proud man from Brighton himself. But I must commend the work that you guys Thank you. are doing. Thank you. It's, and it's, go it's on an inspiration to, to walk around with you. And go on to our website, www.offthefence.org.uk. And, and if you are in another area, get started. Thank you so much for taking me around, it's good, showing me the mate. work you do. Right, You're an inspiration. Great, but it's and lovely to meet you, mate. Yeah, and, and you, uh, mate. And thank you for putting us on and, and uh, really value what you do. Thank you. I hope that you've been inspired by the work that Paul does. I hope that some of you are inspired to donate and help the people here in Brighton with the growing problem. But if you want to help more locally to wherever you are, then, as Paul said, if he can make the difference he's made in the last 27 years, then everyone can make a difference. Thanks for watching, folks.